Now, this is, um, this is the reason that people uh, thought that because the particle is the same reason, because it is, uh, because di it is difficult to form trion polariton because of the same reason. Um, is it uh, got to do with the polarizability of the exciton? Uh, polarizability of the exciton, uh, so this, this is not so an exciton, this is. I mean, so that could be just. So uh, this is basically the uh, momentum conservation mm -hmm. because you have to also uh, take care of the electron in that process, right? Because it is also emitting an electron when it, when a trion is decay decaying to a photon, it also emits an electron. So you have to also satisfy a momentum conservation law. So you have this oscillator strength that that basically reduces because you have this other restriction of this momentum conservation. Okay, now, so this is another work where you have an open cavity and then you can control the density of these uh, MOSC2, electronic density, and basically you can form this polariton gas and on top of that you have a electron gas. So now you talk about um, the electron interaction, so electron exciton interaction and what what the effect that uh, it will show up in this formation of polariton. So they basically claim that they form um, two different kind of resonant modes, which, which they are calling attractive polarion modes and repulsive polarion modes. And they, so this is, these are the mode that, um, that will happen when we, ha when we basically degeneratively dope this material by electron. So I increase the elect uh, electrostatic voltage uh, by gate voltage, I increase the electron concentration on the material and then so basically uh, we are close to, um, so basically it's almost like a metal now and then you, you discuss the physics of exciton. So exciton is now behaving like a impurity here. So this impurity is attracted by this electron and by, so there are two different kind of possibility that it will be attractive polaron or it could be a repulsive polaron and these two different modes now coupled with the reson, uh, cavity resonance. So that is the physics was started, um, uh, studied by this group um, from ETH and so they are basically saying that this is a new class of degenerate Vos Fermi mixture. Okay, so basically they are basically trying to give an impression that we are uh, trying to get a system where you can get very interesting many body physics, uh, where you can control the electron density. Um, so at the time when this paper was out and it is uh, for the review and the review processes was going on, at the same time there was few more uh, publication on the same um, um, accident polaritons at, uh, dif by, by different group, in you know, Menon's group um, and uh, other groups which I think they already published some papers uh, in 2015, the paper I talked about. They are now talking about polaritons at room temperature and also their valley physics. So as I mentioned that this material also have interesting valley indices and you can actually um, polarize these valley indices and uh, see what happens if you can produce spin polar, uh, sorry, uh, valley polarized polarites. So basically they perform this experiment, studied their uh, angle resolve measurement at the same time valley polarization. Okay, now, so this is our work. Now, the rest of the talk, I'm going to spend time on this, uh, our, uh, the work that we did. So we have this cavity geometry. So we made um, top meters uh, so, um, by uh, evaporation technique using silicon oxide and uh, titanium oxide. And then we uh, sandwich a layer uh, of MOSC2 in between. And then what we did, we did a single sort uh, measurement. Um, so unla unlike, so the way the technique that I discussed earlier, that you have a beam, uh, incident beam, and then you measure the reflected beam, and then you change the angle of the beam and measure the reflected, reflect, uh, uh, the reflected light. So basically you measure, you're measuring reflectance at different angle. We can also do one, uh, one single sort measurement by, um, uh, by making a setup where you can utilize the Fourier optics, right? And that we'll, we're going to discuss in next slide, maybe, when we discuss the technique. So this is the cavity geometry that we used, okay? Uh, and another interesting thing is that, um, the, uh, the thing that I talked about also, that we have the top meter, bottom meter, and the photon is confined in this plane. So this is a K parallel, and the K perpendicular direction, it is confined. So you can write down the energy of this photon which is inside the cavity 
or the cavity photon as um, this equation right. So, this is 2 pi by L c, L c is the length of this cavity which is lambda by 2 and this is k parallel. Now, you can see that this is um, approximately uh, shape of a parabola right. Although photon in vacuum you should as you assume that should be a linear right, linear dispersion, but here inside the cavity you can see that uh, if I draw this dispersion, if I plot this dispersion as a function of k parallel it is a parabola. So, it has some finite mass right. Now, this is the parabolic shape of the cavity and in this scale if I draw as a you can you can also um, could be you, uh, also wondering why the exciton was always flat right. Exciton also have a dispersion that is very similar to this, but in this time in this um, in this uh, uh, range it almost look like a uh, almost look like flat because if I consider the mass of these uh, photon cavity photon which is basically you can cons uh, you can basically uh, do it by inverse of the uh, of the curvature then you can see that the mass of this uh, photon is very very less right. So, the curvature is very large and the curvature of this exciton mass is very uh, the curvature of this dispersion of this exciton is uh, almost flat in that scale. That is why the exciton are always plotted like a flat line right. Now, this is an schematic now. So, there was some lenses here and it is not appearing here. So, okay. so there was a lens here that is not appearing in this during this presentation uh, because the color was very light color and my apologies for that, but if you can imagine. So, this is a lens and this is the sample plane right and this is the k parallel and at each k parallel I want to measure the energy of this photon. So, what we do is we um, so the way to do is is that you uh, measure the energy of the photon in, uh, that is emitting at an angle theta right. And since there is a lens uh, in front of an objective it will basically make it a parallel line right. And then what we do is we take another lens uh, here and that lens. So, basically now we can think about another plane here which is a basically Fourier plane of this lens of this objective lens right. So, each point in this Fourier plane are basically mapped to each angle right. So, each angle will come to different points in this plane. Now, if I image this plane by this lens onto the spectrometer slit then each point on the vertical direction of the spectrometer will have the information of points of angles right. And now, each point is also mapped to the CCD that is placed here in CCD is a two dimensional array in the horizontal direction it gives you the information of wavelength because there is a grating at disperses and you get a spectrum right. So, in the horizontal direction you get the information of lambda and in the vertical direction you get the information of angle. So, now if I take a shot um, of the spectrum on the CCD then we will get a parabolic shape right and that is what we basically get. So, it is if I make a sample and now if I go far away from this device from this uh, layer far far away means there is no mono layers or any material inside. So, that we have the bare cavity right. So, there we perform a reflectance measurement in that setup and we get a parabolic shape here right. And now, so that that car will also calibrate your setup right. So, now, you know the formula of the dispersion you know at each energy what is the pixel number. Now, you feed that formula with this curve and you get generate this curve with the parameter of the refractive index of the material of the cavity you can now get uh, the the exact angle value or the k parallel as a function of energy. So, you basically produced in bare cavity the dispersion curve of bare photon when you basically perform this experiment. Three parameters. Uh, okay, so here we already know the energy, right? We only only want to know k parallel. So free parameter would be refractive index, for example. Refractive index. So if I if I fit if I do a fitting with the refractive index, and let's say we have we know the exact thickness of the cavity, 
then we can basically uh, feed this data. So, the fitting value, well, for example, we use SiO2 and I have 1.45, right? So, I use a value around 1.45 and it fits nicely. Okay. Now, so this is the setup that um, we made. This is the Mon oh, sorry. This is the Montana crash stat. I think you also have we um, have in you know, lab. So we'll, I'm eager to see that setup yet. And this is the, the sample um, that we, the sample place. And now the objective sits here. And then uh, this is the optical setup. Where, and there is a spectrometer that is not shown in this uh, uh, in this uh, picture. And then we do this experiment. So we'll basically get first we. Uh, perform a photoluminescence from the sample without any cavity. So, we have a bare photoluminescence data. We have a bare uh, resonance curve from the uh, cavity. So, these are uh, this is a reflectance curve and this is a photoluminescence curve. And now, when we shine here, when the material is inside, we perform another photoluminescence. And here you see that there are in the here there are two plots, but here there are three, right? There the small peak here and that small peak is basically this peak and there are two splitted peak here. So, one is a, so this is the lower polariton branch. Uh, so, this is the, so this is the middle polariton, this is the upper polariton and this is the uh, lower polariton. So, there are three polariton branches. So, we, unlike the two coupled oscillator, now we have three coupled oscillator because there is a trion here, right. So now, uh, we, we, know we want to do, so this is an integrated PL. So, it is integrated over all the angles. So, we added all the PL signal at all the angles and we produce this curve, right. Now, if I do an angle resolve measurement, this is the um, plot that we get where, uh, so this is for increasing the contrast, we basically taken a logarithm and then we did, we did a derivative and we get a contrast of these different branches. And uh, not only that, so this is the raw data. Now, what we do is uh, we basically uh, take each point and we take cuts, line cuts, right. So, it means that we vary um, the energy and at a fixed k parallel value and these are the line plots at different k parallel values and you can see that there are three peaks here, right, so the for, in, uh, for at different uh, k parallel values. And if you notice that this peak for example, um, their separation is basically increasing, right. So, this one and this one is increasing just like this two branch. But if you see here, the trend is opposite, you know, it is opposite in the sense that, um, so here if I notice um, this point and then you see that uh, it, this point is basically um, shifted in opposite direction. Right. That means their dispersion here is inverted. Right. Unlike unlike this one, the lower middle polariton, which is basically is like a this curve, we have inverted uh, dispersion. So this is actually the uh, n the new thing about our experiment, and this is a expected dispersion curve that. We, um, we, ex we, we expected that if I, if I have a three coupled oscillator and then if I solve that three cross three matrix that I had already discussed with a spring model, then I could take this, we, we could get a dispersion, three dispersion plots with polaritons which have all normal dispersions, right. It is like the upper polariton that there is not different. But then how we basically, this is the experimental curve that we get and if I plot as I mentioned, if I take single lines and pick, find out the peak positions at so every this point. This is the triangle, this one this one is the lower? Yes, this is a triangle, yeah. Only for the triangle branch. So, this is happening, uh, okay sorry, I, uh, I actually uh, forgot to mention that I am talking about the inverted curve of this trion branch, if you compare it with this experimental data, you see that this is inverted compared to this one. Okay, now, uh, so this is the, at each point I am now fit, I have fitted the data and find out the peak positions and then plotted in k parallel and we see this 
plots and then we do a fitting with a model, right? And then how do we get this inverted uh, dispersal? So, this is a um, naively we can think about if I have three coupled oscillator just like before in the Hopfield model. So, this is the exciton photon coupling, right? Naively you can also think about photon trion coupling, right? With from the trion and this model will basically give you this uh, three modes with all uh, normal uh, dispersal, but that is what we, we are not getting because because, because you, you notice that this is actually not true because this is not the on, not the only thing happening. So, here basically a trion is uh, uh, a trion is uh, decayed to a photon right. So, photon this is the uh, creation operator of a photon this is a trion you can think about a interaction where a trion decays into photon and inside cavity it is happening multiple times that is how these interactions are happening and that is why these polariton branches are forming. But this is not the only picture because there is an electron that is you have to consider right. These are no more uh, so basically it is no more um, a boson just like exciton because this is a charged exciton. Now, we basically improve that model by considering a different kind of vertex right. So, right now the vertex that we had when exciton and photon is coupling so an exciton and then a photon right there is no electron, but now we basically have to consider this electron and then we improve or modify this uh, Hamiltonian by taking care this electron. Now, what we basically physically what it is happening is that, so we have this lower polariton branch right and this is uh, because of rebel level repulsion it has uh, it has it has come downward and we have this bare trion resonance. So, this is a bare trion resonance with this uh, dotted blue line. Now, you can you can see that near k parallel 0